Usually when I make these videos, I have to explain what the name of the weapon stands for and how it works. But for this one, it does exactly what it says in the tin. A KEM or kinetic energy missile is a missile that, instead of using an explosively formed penetrator, also known as a heat warhead, uses a kinetic penetrator to perforate and destroy a target. It's not anything particularly advanced or fancy, but kinetic energy missiles do have the potential to be extremely useful and lethal. Traditionally, heat-based anti-tank missiles have been so effective that there has been little need to replace them with anything else. They were capable of penetrating so much armor that a hit against any tank was pretty much a guaranteed kill. This situation changed with the proliferation of composite tank armor and explosive reactive armor. Composite armor is, in most cases, primarily designed to stop heat rounds. The same can be said for explosive reactive armor. To get around this issue, militaries did a few things. The first and most simple solution was to make heat rounds with so much penetration capability that they could pierce composite armor anyway. The second solution was to create anti-tank missiles with tandem charge warheads. As the name implies, tandem charge warheads have two charges, one that destroys explosive reactive armor, and a second that closely follows suit, penetrating the armor via the opening cleared by the first charge. The third solution was to develop top attack missiles. These missiles were slash are designed to fly over a target or fly in an arc, so that they land on top of the target, exploiting the weak roof armor of tanks, which can never be armored enough to stop such an attack. The tables have turned once again with the proliferation of active protection systems. There are both soft kill and hard kill active protection systems, which are specifically designed to deter or destroy anti-tank missiles. While these systems do have a limited number of uses, they greatly reduce the effectiveness of anti-tank missiles. There are a few ways to overcome active protection systems, with one of them being kinetic energy missiles. It's much more difficult to stop kinetic ammunition than it is to stop chemical effect rounds. Chemical effect warheads are pretty fragile, relatively speaking, and have lower velocities. These are the primary factors that make it so easy for them to be disrupted or destroyed. Active protection systems can still reduce the effectiveness of kinetic projectiles, and some claim to be able to stop them completely, but it's still better than having a chemical effect warhead. Chemical warheads are also adversely affected by explosive reactive armor and slat armor, while kinetic ammunition is not as affected by ERA and is not at all affected by slat armor. There have been multiple anti-tank kinetic energy missile projects, all of them originating in the United States. The US was well aware of the threat that mass Soviet armor posed, and therefore put a lot of time and effort into figuring out a solution. One such solution was Vought's hypervelocity missile, which started development in 1981. The HVM was intended to be an air-to-surface missile, and would use a heavy metal penetrator instead of a chemical warhead to destroy enemy tanks. Some sources claim the penetrator was made of steel, others claim it was made of tungsten. The missile had no fins, instead using small thrusters to make path corrections. The HVM used a forward-looking infrared camera, or FLIR, to identify targets, and used a laser to guide the missiles onto the target. Though originally designed as a weapon for aircraft, other branches started to take interest in the HVM. At this time, the army was looking for ways to deploy early entry forces, such as paratroopers, with weapons capable of taking out enemy armor and fortifications. While they were also developing the armored gun system project for this purpose, they believed that Vought's HVM would be able to supplement that need. As such, the army initiated the Line of Sight Anti-Tank, or LOSAT program, in 1981 which was centered around a slightly altered version of the Vought HVM. This version, called the MGM-166 Kinetic Energy Missile, was essentially an HVM with fins added onto it. The missile was still beam riding, and still used a FLIR system for target identification. The MGM-166 had a total weight of 174 pounds, was 113 inches long, and had a diameter of 6.4 inches. The missile utilized a solid rocket motor and could accelerate up to 5,000 feet per second, or roughly 1,500 meters per second, which is a little under what most modern tank rounds reach. It used a 6.6 pound penetrator, and could theoretically guide multiple missiles onto different targets simultaneously. The KEM had a maximum range of 5 kilometers. Once the target was selected, the firing computer automatically guided the missile onto a target. The low sat system was mounted on a variety of vehicles, including the Humvee, Bradley, and FMC's close combat vehicle light also known as the XMA Armored Gun System. There were also proposals to mount LOSAD in other vehicles, such as the M113 Armored Personnel Carrier and V150 Armored Car. The LOSAT Humvee could carry four ready-to-fire KEMs on the roof, with eight more being towed in a trailer behind the vehicle. Due to their weight, a small crane was used to reload the missiles. It had no auxiliary weapons. The LOSAT Humvee was transportable by both fixed-wing aircraft and helicopters. The Bradley variant was low-profile, and used an elevating platform to hold and fire the missiles. The platform held four KEMs at a time, with more being stored in the hull. The FLIR camera was mounted on top of the platform, allowing the Bradley to scan for and engage targets without exposing the hull. It also had no auxiliary weapons. 
The CCVL version had a fully rotating turret with two pods of 6 KEMs, for a total of 12. This was likely the most mobile of all the platforms, though it had to expose itself to engage targets, unlike the Bradley version. This version also had a 50 cal on a pintle mount, for close defense. The Humvee variant was the most recent, and went the furthest in development, as it was easier to build, deploy, and was far cheaper. In 2003, the Losat Humvee conducted live fire tests, and performed well. However, that same year, a new project called CCAM, or Compact Kinetic Energy Missile, was awarded a 36-month advanced technology demonstration program. CCAM aimed to be a lighter but just as lethal alternative to LOSAT. In 2003, LOSAT's funding was cut, and the program was officially terminated in 2004. Not much is known about CCAM. It was supposed to weigh less than 100 pounds, be around 5 feet long, and have both improved velocity and range when compared to LOSAT. CCAM was tested against the T-72 with explosive reactive armor, and passed, but has since been cancelled. It could be that the army has simply shoved it in the closet for further use if it's needed, or that another program has supplanted it. Kinetic energy missiles offer a very attractive number of benefits. They're not bound by the limitations of conventional propellant, so they can achieve velocities in excess of Mach 5, which is beyond what normal tank cannons can do. They also offer increased range, having the ability to engage tanks from relative immunity. The M256 smoothbore cannon on the M1 Abrams has a maximum effective range of about 4 kilometers, while even the relatively outdated LOSAT had a range of 5 kilometers. Additionally, kinetic energy missiles can be mounted on platforms that are too light to support tank cannons, like Humvees. As I mentioned earlier, it's harder for ERA and active protection systems to stop kinetic energy missiles. Like everything else, kinetic energy missiles do have cons. For one, they're very expensive. The LOSAT program was cancelled partially because they couldn't find funding for it. Secondly, they could also still be disrupted by soft kill active protection systems. Though beam riding missiles are hard to disrupt, it's far from impossible. And finally, while kinetic energy missiles can be used to destroy fortifications, they would likely be close to useless for anti-infantry use. ATGMs aren't designed for use against infantry per se, but that doesn't stop it from happening. The US has been happy to use tow missiles in the anti-infantry role for years. It's entirely possible that there will be programmable ATGMs which can be used against tanks, helicopters, and infantry. ADAT sort of came close to that. This sort of thing isn't really possible with kinetic energy missiles. To close out the video, I obviously don't think that KEMs will replace tank guns, as tank guns need to be good at multiple roles, whereas KEMs are good at one or two. They would most likely be used on light vehicles, IFVs, helicopters, and aircraft. I don't expect them to fully replace chemical effect missiles, but I do expect them to start showing up in the near future. And that's the end of that. If you guys thought the video was informative, I'd greatly appreciate it if you left a like or a comment. As always, hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you on the next one.